Hello, thank you so much for staying here on the AM show. And uh, you just heard my colleague Benjamin Akapu speak to uh, presidential hopeful Mr. Akbalu. But it's now time to talk about your health. And uh, for the past few days, we've been talking to you about a vaccination program by the Ghana Health Service because COVID still remains a threat, even though uh, it's no longer a pandemic. And even though we've seen a decrease in the number of cases, there's still a concern, especially because a recent WHO report showed that even though there was a decrease in reported cases in Africa, there was an increase in the number of deaths. So it's important that we stay safe, we keep to the protocols and get our vaccinations. This morning, I've been joined by Dr. Kwame Amponsa Achiano. He's programs manager, expanded program on immunization at the Ghana Health Service. And he's joining us for a conversation because there is a campaign by the Ghana Health Service to ensure that at least they're able to get most of us in Ghana vaccinated. Hello. Good morning to you, Good Doc. morning, Ben. It's good to meet you. Uh, good to meet in you. In person, finally. Sure. Briefly tell us what the um, situation is like when it comes to our figures now and COVID. Thank you very much and good morning to your cherished viewers and listeners alike. So, if I have to say something, anything in one sentence, I will say that uh, COVID, number of cases of COVID have been reducing. So, we've been seeing decreasing number of cases. However, the pandemic is not yet over. Mm. For us in Ghana, I would say that um, our case load is very low. Mm -hmm. We have only just only one active case. Okay, as we speak. Yes, as, as we speak now. And generally for all the other regions, apart from Greater Accra, there's virtually no case. Mm. Right. So then why is it important for us to get vaccinated? Because right. then, I mean, oh, we are okay. Why do you still want to get us vaccinated? Yeah, but we've been here before, you remember. Right. When there was no case or very few cases and then suddenly we had a spike. Yeah. Yeah. But suffice to say that um, on the 5th of May, the WHO de-escalated COVID as no longer a public health emergency mm -hmm. of international concern. Mm. Unfortunately, people misconstrue that as the end of the pandemic. Okay. That is not the case. Okay. The case is that we are moving from the emergency phase Great. to a more relaxed, as it were, integrated manner, mm. where COVID is part of us and we need to deal with it as such. So it's not as if the pandemic is over, it's not yet over. Mm. It is the emergency phase of it. Of course, we can't remain perpetually in emergency. We need to live our lives. Yeah. And so once immunity is going up, people have been vaccinated, some have had infections. You know, there are two ways of getting immunity. You either get infection mm -hmm. or you get vaccinated. If you, if you are not lucky, you get infection, you die. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So, and that's what we are trying to prevent. Exactly. Okay. A lot of people have had immunity mm -hmm. go, go up and therefore we would say that the, the, the cases are reducing as a result. Mm -hmm. But that is not the end of the pandemic. I made reference to a recent WHO report. Um, even though we don't have specific statistics about Ghana, uh, our region, which is Africa, is you know um, um, cited in the report for having a decrease in the number of cases, but an increase in deaths. Do we understand why that is happening at all? Well, I don't have any major understanding of that. Right. It's, it's nobody has done any studies to suggest mm. any clue to anything right. but the point is that this virus is very very treacherous it can easily change its form mm -hmm. what we the scientists will call mutation mm -hmm. so you can never predict it mm -hmm. and therefore we need to get our loins and make sure that we are protected and we are not taken by storm. yeah that was one of the things about um, the COVID virus that you know, got a lot of people disturbed because of the mutations, the variants, and there were even concerns when vaccines were produced, whether they could deal with all the emerging variants and all that. Yeah. These, these vaccines we are going to get. I know we have used the Johnson & Johnson, we have used the Pfizer, and did we ever use Moderna? Yes, we did. We did we use had Moderna. Moderna. We even used Sputnik V. Sputnik V, yes, you're right. And the so, AstraZeneca. And AstraZeneca. So 
this vaccination exercise we are embarking on, um, what would it look like, especially for those who are yet to receive their booster shots? Do they need to be concerned about whether they're going to get the same dose of the same type of vaccine or we can do a mix and merge? I just want us to educate people on what they should expect when they walk to a center to get vaccinated or when a health official approaches them to get vaccinated. So responding to your question specifically, for boosters, we do not mind whichever vaccine you take. Okay. By our policy, for a booster, you can take any of the vaccines, irrespective of what you took for your, what we call the primary series. Mm. In other words, the very first doses you took. Right. Yeah. So for boosters, there's no problem. Mm. What we have, in fact, there's no new vaccine. It is what we had already. For now, what we have in the system is Johnson & Johnson, which is one shot. And that is what we are using. Okay. It is for persons 18 years and above. You will recall that for us, the policy is 15 year olds and above being vaccinated. However, we don't have the vaccine for them now. We are still working to get additional vaccines. Mm -hmm. So what we have is what we have had previously and it's the same vaccine we are using. I, I, I remember the point there was a lot of um, apathy and uh, hesitation. People were skeptical because there were all these myths around about it being a setting, you know, way of controlling humans eventually. There are some chips in there. People even put their phones to the site where they were injected and they say the phones got stacked or something magnetic. And so people were like, look, I mean, we, we, we don't want to be a part of this new world order, uh, which is trying to influence and, you know, all the theories, yeah, right? Yeah, of course. And yeah. um, usher in the you know post rapture world and obviously everything so many things everything be, yeah. religious yes, whatever right there be some information disinformation mm, mm. but the case speaks for itself right so i can imagine how challenging it will be for you now that the figures are pointing to a reduction and trying to convince people that it's still important that you get the shot we had a target do we know how far we've gone in reach? Was it 20 million? Yes, million? yes, yes. How? Actually, specifically around 18 point something, but right. it was rounded right up, up to 20, 20 million. million. Yeah. So what percentage of that target have we um, vaccinated or covered? Interestingly, we've done about 76% of oh, that wow. target, yes. That's impressive. So you have almost 14 million persons ever coming for a vaccine. 14 million, that's a hopping large number. Um, about, uh, among them, about 11 million are fully vaccinated. In quotes, they've received the primary series. So we still have around 3 million persons who are yet to, to get, complete. even get an no, initial to dose, it. are to complete, okay. Yes, and then if you subtract the 14 from the 18 plus, you have over 4 million who have never mm. received a vaccine. Mm. And so that's the statistics. We've done a lot, but mm. we still need to push hard. But the issue about vaccine is that you normally give a vaccine when the person, when the disease is not there. It's better that way. Yes, because that's, that's the nature of a vaccine is preventive. Okay. And so it's, it's when you don't see the disease, that is when you need to actually give vaccination. Right. Um, if you look for the kids, for example, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yellow fever, measles, BCG, we, you, you don't see them because we continuously give the vaccine. Right. Anytime you withdraw the vaccines, the diseases will come back. Mm -hmm. And so a vaccine is not curative. And that is why when I get the question, you don't see the disease, why are you vaccinated? That's the essence of it. Mm -hmm. The vaccine is preventive. Right. But have we achieved herd immunity? Are we not, close not, to that? Not yet. If I, nobody really knows the th threshold for, health, uh, for herd immunity or community, community immunity, as we call it. But... The principle is to get as many persons who are eligible as possible to get vaccinated. And the more you do that, the better it is for the rest who, for one reason or the other, may not be vaccinated. Mm. So is that either because of some circumstances or the other, other one, one issue or the other, yeah, they, they may not be able to vaccinate. And so that is the, the reason you don't need to get 100% coverage. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So this is happening from the 19th to the 23rd of July, right? We started two days ago. You started two days ago. So we are completing this exercise 
the on the on Sunday, mm -hmm. but that's just a pure set aside to drum home to make it a bit of noise, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mobilize mm -hmm. society. Mm -hmm. Beyond that, it was still vaccinated. So it doesn't end. That, that's yeah. what I wanted to come to. So exactly. this is just a campaign, right? So um, we're just trying to mop up and mobilize as exactly. many people. And you know, because we are quite a busy people, sometimes people like you to bring sure. it to them. And so these are some of the exactly. exercises that you and, <laughs> you have to and embark you look, on. This is the seventh one we are doing. Yes. And any time we do that, people people take. In fact, there's a spike always. Mm. And the data speaks for itself. Okay. Um, so, 23rd of July is Sunday. Yes. Where can people go to? What should they look out for? So, you, our healthcare workers will be moving to churches and mosques, places where you can find human beings, as it were, market areas, lorry parks. Some will go over banks and sleep on the islands and all the places that we normally do childhood vaccination. This is adult. So, we are just replicating that mm. for the adults. Mm. But again, beyond that, the whole world is trying to make COVID vaccines part of routine. So that's the next stage because now it's de-escalated and mm. it's no longer a public health emergency of international concern. It's going to be part of the routine okay. so that routinely when adults who are at risk, there are three risk groups. You have the high risk, the medium, the low. They can walk in any time and take their vaccine. How many booster shots can one take? Well, for now, I would say that if we go by the risk groups, then we would think that if you are high risk, like healthcare workers, people, persons with underlying conditions who are also old, mm. and especially the older adults, they will need a booster after about every six months to one, one year. So in other words, so you are prepping us to... One or two. Take this as a lifestyle, really. not 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 necessarily. Maybe okay. up to up to about two years, 2025. We may have mm -hmm. to give boosters to especially those who are okay. most at risk. Right. I, I see the challenge for many people is that we are not used in this part of the world to older people taking vaccinations yes, on the regular. In other parts of the world, when the flu season is coming, exactly for their flu shots exactly. and all that. Uh, but here. It's not like that. We see the children getting their vaccination. Sure. So I think that that's where the struggle is. Yeah, so it's going to be like the flu shot, but mm. not perpetually as okay. is happening in the temperate areas. Mm. For this, it's maybe a year or two. Mm. We're still learning a lot about the virus, a interestingly. Lot. Lot. Uh, are there new variants emerging? Well, new variants keep on coming up, but these are not variants that are too different from the mm. original, I mean the Omicron. Okay. Variant. Right. So this morning, I'm speaking to Dr. Amponsa Achianu, Programs Manager, the Expanded Program on Immunization for the Ghana Health Service. And he's here to talk to us about their National COVID Vaccination Program. And it is the seventh one. And it's all because, yes, the numbers are reducing. Yes, the WHO has de-escalated um, you know, or how do you yes, put it? Yes, declassified. Declassified the, 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 the whole as, disease as an emergency. Yes, and so it. it still exists. You need to protect yourself, especially if you fall within a vulnerable group. It's just important that you take responsibility for yourself. Sure. Um, so how do people contact you? I know that you're, you're, you're all around the country. But if somebody says, for example, I have an office, you haven't visited us, I think you should come in and try and, you know, handle, take care of everybody here. Is there, are there opportunities like that for oh, people to contact the Ghana Sure, there, service? there are surely opportunities like that. Of mm -hmm. course, you don't expect people to be moving from house to house, I mean, vaccinating individuals as it were, because mm -hmm. it's a very difficult task when it comes to injectable vaccines. If it's oral, it's easy. Yeah. But for an, an injectable, you need a nice place, maybe under a shade, where you can put all one or two things t together and then also dispose your waste properly. If you are moving from house to house, I know some uh, healthcare workers have tried to do that, but it's exceedingly difficult. And so if it's a, a workplace, that mm -hmm. is easier, mm -hmm. where you have people... Yeah, gathered, large groupings. Uh, correct. Yeah. That can be arranged. That can and in be. fact, that is what uh, some many of the districts have been doing. They arrange with the people and then move as and when it is. It is necessary. Doc, let's talk about side effects because it's something that interests people a lot. Um, we've read articles, we've seen 
concerns about blood clotting issues. And I, and, I, and I know that for healthcare workers, you're always careful when it comes to issues like this. But we can't deny the fact that there are reported cases of suspected you know, issues as a result of people taking the jabs and all. How do you address that? What okay. should people do? Is it true that if I get a, a COVID vaccine and I begin to feel sick, it's probably because I may have a certain disease that's lurking that hasn't, you know, gone full blown and the vaccine is not necessarily causing me to be sick, but it's just exposing that. I mean, just help us address because there's so many things that we hear. Yeah. Yeah. So, yes, the issue of adverse events is very tricky. Of course, we communicate that a lot. The, the one thing about vaccines is that you get a vaccine or anybody gets a vaccine, anything happens after that and it's the vaccine. And in, in fact, almost invariably, that is not the case. Mm. However, we know that vaccines themselves have infer, inherent properties that can also cause side effects, like fever, maybe vomiting, and so on. Uh, so we have some side effects that are due to the vaccine. Others are just coincidental. Mm. So what do we do? I mean, so, it's one of the reasons people say that they don't want to go for the vaccine because they don't want to be left with the side effects. So, what, what has the study shown over, over the time? Are yeah, these so, side effects mild or, you know... Yeah, like, for every vaccine. In fact, COVID, the COVID vaccine side effects have not been too different from the side effects of other vaccines we know. Otherwise, we'd have stopped them a long time ago because mm. it's always risks against benefits or benefits risks. So normally for vaccine, if the benefits far outweigh the risk, then of course you manage the risks. If the risks are over and above that of the benefit, of course the vaccine is then withdrawn. But what is, this, what is so the data? For us, the data shows that there's no cause for concern mm. in terms of the COVID vaccines as of now. And interestingly, COVID vaccine is the most vaccine, I would say the, the vaccine that has been given most in the whole world. Over 13 billion doses given, about five, over 5 billion persons have been vaccinated which experiment is more than this. Mm -hmm. So if there's really a problem, I'm sure the whole world would have seen it and then the vaccines would have been withdrawn. But as of now, working with international community, working with our local community and the, of course the regulators, we haven't seen anything extraordinary. Mm. The issue about people who have gotten initial doses and coming for booster jabs and, and all the concerns around that, that's why you created the card, because it has all the records in there. But we know the kind of society we live in. People have been affected by floods. People have you know, been robbed. They can't find their cards. I know somebody who went and said, look, I've taken jobs already. I can't remember what, which um, brand it was, but I, I want to retrieve the data. And, they, and they're told, we can't. We, 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 we can't help you. He went to the center, type in my name, try and get me just the data so that, because I've moved from, from Kumasi to Accra. So I just need to do my booster jobs and I need that to help me. But so the cards don't seem to be working we as have, we expected. We have to. levels of, compl I mean, like levels where you can do that, you can launch your, uh, launch your complaint. Okay. First of all, if your card gets missing, you see, the card, replacement of the card is not as simple as that. It's like you replace a passport and you say, give me another one. It's not, you need to have a proof that your card is truly missing. Okay. And so what we advise people to do, if you are beggared, for example, report to the police, let the police give you a report. And then you send it to either the district, if the district cannot help you, they direct you to the region. At worst, then you come to the national. And we've been helping people, especially travelers. On that, okay. on you're that able to help yes, them? Yes, we're able to between... do that. Okay, so you've just heard it here. If you are struggling, if you have issues, just reach out to the Ghana Health Service at your district level, and then they can escalate it if they cannot help you. But talking about the cards, we still don't need them to travel, do we? For now, um, for Ghana, probably not. But if you are going out, you need to find out from your destination country. Right. Because I was in Togo okay. last week, and I tell you, there's a rigor. You need to produce your card. Oh, wow. Yes. So eventually maybe countries may also de-escalate that, but for now you need to keep your card. 
All right. So yeah. please keep your card. And I know somebody who was compelled to get a dose because they had to travel. Not, not necessarily because they, they wanted to get it, but, you know, they have to satisfy the requirements of so, the country they so are visiting. We, maybe we can interrogate that. So which yeah. was more important to, to that person? Is it the travel or the vaccine? That yeah. isn't it's yeah. interesting. And, and, and Doc, once you're, you're bringing that, let's just, let's, just, let's just let people know there are required times between the shots. Yeah. So I know of people who've literally had to beg because their travel time is closed and the health official says, I can't give you the dose today and give you the second dose in wow. two or three weeks. I need to wait for the required time. Okay. But the people are bent on traveling at the and time so they, ha they, they have to. They insist on that. And they insist on yeah. that. And it's usually a struggle. Let, because me, the, let me explain. Maybe yeah. we need to re-educate our people. Mm. You see, giving vaccines at short intervals do not really cause any problem. Okay. The issue is the benefit. You may not benefit. So one of the, the doses will be counted as null and void. That's the only issue. Mm. But if the person insists, if he's an adult and he insists, you can give it. There's no problem. Right. There's yeah. no problem no. if I take a first But the minimum interval, usually for many of the vaccines, is four weeks. But there are also some vaccines we give at three weeks interval. Okay. So it's not an issue. Okay. Yeah. Right. <laughs> or maybe just to save yourself all the hassle, just get your shots be relaxed, get your card whenever exactly. you have to travel. You just yeah, but I understand that sometimes, you know, the, 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 it's an unexpected thing. Yes. yes. So if you come today and you come the following, let's say, three weeks after, for many of the vaccines we can give. Hmm. Moderna, for example, 21 days, can give. We have tried to standardize a lot of the things so okay. that you, get, you take them at maybe a minimum of four weeks interval. There are some that you need a minimum of, say, eight weeks interval. But, you know, because it will bring a lot of confusion, we try to standardize looking at the benefits and the risks. And that is why some of these issues, especially I'm talking specifically with COVID, that's why some of these issues around confusion come. come. Let's take some of the boxes. Can pregnant women take yes, the vaccine? Yes, they can. We but now they, have, have they have their vaccine. Okay, Which so is, you need to declare if you're pregnant yes, and it's not yes, visible. Yes, yes. In fact, mm -hmm. they are part of the, I'll say, the, the high, the medium risk mm -hmm. now, as, mm -hmm. as the new guidelines okay. suggest. Okay. They are part of the medium risk. Okay. And more so, infants, that is, infants be, be, below six months are, are more at risk than even children six to 17, six months to 17. But we years. don't have vaccines for them yet. No, we do, but we in Ghana do not give it to, based on our data. Oh, okay. We don't give it to persons below 15. Okay. Yes. Right. But, we, but many countries do as low as six months, especially mm. the US. Mm. Mm. All right. But the point is pregnant women can take the vaccine, but not what we have now. Okay. You remember I said they have their vaccine. Yes, so, so in Ghana we are not given pregnant women. Now, Ghana. now, Ghana. what we are doing now. Okay. But we've given pregnant women before. Okay. Yeah, in, in, in the past, um, I think since January, okay. when we started the, 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 it should be January, January last year, that's when we, we, the policy was revised to cover pregnant women. Okay. And their vaccine, the re vaccine we reserved for them was Pfizer and, uh, were Pfizer and Moderna. Okay, but yeah. we don't have that don't currently have that in the system. No. Okay. So, well, if you're pregnant, you just may have to declare to the health. You have to. Yes. Yeah. I mean, it's important. Yeah. You may not be asked. Ideally, you should be. If someone is going to get a vaccine, you should ask these questions. Oh, yes. Like, you, you, of course. Provider. It's very important to mm -hmm. inquire about illness and whether the person is pregnant and right. so on. You need to. Right. There are a few questions they ask. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it's important just in case your uh, health care provider or the nurse forgets to ask you, this is information that you must be willing to share. So, Doc, we're quickly wrapping up this conversation. Um, just to, to summarize all that we've said, even though the WHO says that we no longer have an emergency pandemic of exactly. COVID, it's recommending that we extend or try and cover a larger uh, section of our population when it comes to vaccination and you've explained why so in just a minute i'd like you to 
rehash those points just in case someone is joining us um, you know, uh, after you made those statements. Yeah, thank Let's you. just explain why this is important for the WHO and the Ghana Health Service. Thank you, Bennett. So what we have said is that on the 5th of May, WHO announced that COVID-19 is no longer a public health emergency of international concern. That does not mean that the pandemic is over and that we are gradually moving from an emergency or we've moved from an emergency and gradually heading towards what we call the integration. And therefore we have risk groups, high risk, medium and low. So our premium now will be on the high and the medium risk persons who would have to take the vaccine at scheduled times. And especially for the high risk groups, healthcare workers, the um, old adults mm -hmm. and persons, adults with underlying conditions like diabetes, hypertension and so on. We need to give them boosters, even if they have completed, I mean, as long as they've completed their primary series. Mm -hmm. And the boosters, the guidelines suggest that we give them six months to 12 months interval for the next couple of years. So the summary is that COVID is going down in terms of number of cases, but the disease is not yet gone. And we need to have um, protect ourselves, especially the vulnerable, the most vulnerable. Right. I appreciate your time here this Thank morning. You very much for and uh, that's uh, Dr. Ampon Sachiano, Programs Manager, Expanded Program on Immunization at the Ghana Health Service. And so, uh, just like we say, uh, so if we want to deal with COVID, let's, let's deal with it once and for all and not um, be relaxed because we think that we have overcome. Uh -huh. that's, that's the right thing. Thanks for correcting. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you, Doc. Well, we'll be, we'll be bringing you more here on the AM show. Uh, when we come back, I'll be joined by Mufasa. He's a finalist of Joy Prime's Median Edition of Cues and Lyrics, a musical reality show. You want to stay and listen. Hits 103.9 FM, the official mouthpiece of Tashiri Institutions, brings you the Hits Tashiri Show. Friday, 21st July, 2023, the Hits Tashiri Show stops at the Ghana Communication.